United Auto Workers are on strike at three plants in three states against all three major U.S. auto companies for the very first time. Tomorrow, union leaders are expected to be back at the bargaining table. They did not have negotiations today. Tonight, though, in Detroit, the UAW president, Sean Fain, appeared with Senator Bernie Sanders at his side. You guys are ready to rumble now, aren't you? We're in it, baby. It's time the politicians in this country pick a side. The billionaire class has been taking everything, and the working class has been left scraping. He said it's time for politicians to take a side. Well, the president did do that today. You can probably guess who's. Record profits have not been shared fairly, in my view, with those workers. Workers deserve a fair share of the benefits they help create for an enterprise. The bottom line is that auto workers help create America's middle class. They deserve a contract that sustains them in the middle class. President Biden announced there that he is sending two of his top aides to Michigan to get directly more involved in these negotiations that are going to restart tomorrow. Of course, at the center of all of this is not just what is happening with this strike, what the workers will potentially get out of it if they come to a deal. It's also a political factor because Michigan is a state that President Biden basically must win if he wants to indeed remain in the Oval Office. There are a lot of implications here. I want to get straight to the source tonight with Oscar winning filmmaker who got his start taking the tough questions straight to the then chairman of General Motors in his 1989 documentary, Roger and Me. We will get to that in a moment, Michael Moore. Thank you uh, for being here tonight. When you look at the picture of what's happening in Detroit, in Michigan right now, at these other plants and this strategic strike that they have going on, do you think it was inevitable? Absolutely, and long overdue. Uh, and, and not just for auto workers, all across the country, uh, people have been struggling to survive. The, the uh, tiny wage increases they've received uh, in the last 20 or 30 years uh, have not helped average, everyday, middle-class, working-class Americans keep up. So the fact that the UAW has so boldly gone forth here to take on all three auto companies at the same time, something that's never been done before, and and stand up for this. I mean, it's it, it's. Uh, I'm very proud of this union. My all my family were UAW members. My uncle uh, was in the sit down strike of 1936-37 that essentially founded the UAW. It was the first contract when they took over the factories for 44 days and uh, in the middle of winter, and really brought General Motors to their knees and made them acknowledge the union and to give the union their first contract. So yeah. all these years later, uh, you know, I'm filled with a great sense of pride having been raised in a UAW family, uh, being being a union member myself, currently on strike, the Writers Guild and the Screen Actors Guild. Uh, and it's not just us. It's 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 350 Starbucks locations have unionized, they voted in the union, uh, Amazon warehouses, Chipotle's, go down the list, young people, young people, young adults are organizing unions. It's it's a very important time. And 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 before it was hard for the unions to uh uh I mean for the for the unions to, to survive a strike because they would just fire everybody and and hire more people. Well, right now in this country, we have 9.8 million jobs that are not filled. They can't find workers to fill them. 9.8 million. So so they know, the automakers know that uh, they aren't just going to be able to treat the union poorly and get away with it this time. They need these workers or they can't build the cars. And, and the union, I think, is going to stand very strong because they have a great new president, uh, the first one truly elected democratically by all the members in the union, got to vote for the president, not just the ones at the convention. And, um, and he has got the right attitude. The executives got a 40% uh, uh, wage increase in their pay, the CEO and all the executives, so should the workers. They have made record profits even right up until right now, the six month period we're in right now, combined the three automakers have made $21 billion in profits. Unheard of, this is a record. They've made off like bandits during the, the, the pandemic. They raised the price of cars on everybody. Everybody who's tried to buy a car 
knows it's 30% more than it was before the pandemic. How did that happen? So they've made a ton of money. Uh, they, of course, they don't want to share it uh, with these workers who gave all this money back when Obama saved the auto industry back in 08 and 09. Uh, and, and they had to get the union, the workers had to give up all this money to the point where uh, new hires are only paid $15.48 an hour. All right, just this, and without the benefits, pensions gone, all of this stuff. And people have had it. You know, this is, it's so anti American to well, go after the work Michael, during a you, time like this. You mentioned there the salaries of the executives, and that really has been. You know, between that and the company's profits, that has just been at the center of everything you hear from these these union workers and just how fast they've grown. And the CEO of General Motors, Mary Barra, who out of the three that they are striking against makes the most, she made nearly $30 million last night. She was asked about this very problem by my colleague, Vanessa Yurkevich. I want you to listen to what her answer was. Okay. If you're getting a 34% pay increase over four years and you're offering 20% to employees right now, do you think that's fair? Well, I think when you look at the overall, the overall structure and, and the fact that 92% is based on performance and you look at uh, what we've been doing of sharing in the profitability when the company does well, I think uh, we've got a very compelling offer on the table and that's the focus I have right now. What do you make of that wow. logic? <laughs> uh, there, well, there was no logic there. Uh, and, you know, this is what's so great, especially about the younger people, young adults, young workers. They, when they hear the BS, they understand it. Now, Mary Barra uh, is uh, not only making that $30 million uh, right now, uh, you know, she's also on the board of Disney. A lot, this is how a lot of these CEOs work. They don't just run their own companies. They're on boards of other large corporations. And, 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 and the irony of, you know, I'm part of a union on strike against Disney and these Hollywood studios. And, and, and here she is, the CEO of General Motors. It's, it's, I'm just so happy that people are standing up for this. And, 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 and that the, uh, especially the UAW, a guiding light here uh, for people. And uh, they know they're not going to get away with this. I think that they know that. I mean, that's why she's right. They, they have offered uh, something they've never offered before. But they've even got the president now essentially against them in the sense that when he went on TV today, I got to tell you this, in my entire lifetime, and I mean, including Democratic administrations, mm -hmm. I have never heard a president once inaugurated uh, say that they are supporting the workers. This president, Biden, went on TV today and said that if they had record profits at the, at the car companies, then the workers deserve a record contract. Wow. I mean, does anybody realize how that has never been said by a president in the Oval Office? This is this is um, very heartening to everybody who's working hard for a living, trying to get by. Uh, uh, and it's it's, um, you know, I, I'm sorry that she feels that way. You know, she I'll say something about Mary Barra. She was the only CEO in the history of General Motors that was an actual auto worker. She worked in the factory in Flint. Her UAW member worked in the factory. Uh, she went to college in Flint. I mean, she's a Flint person. She's a UAW person. And for her to take $30 million a year and, and, and have this huge pay increase when the workers last time got 6% raise and, and now are still the workers who are making $15 and 48 cents an hour back from saved the company today. This is what 15 years later, the workers at that low tier, these are full-time workers, by the way, doing the same job as the person next to them on the assembly line. They're making today $15.48 an hour. Outrageous. And I'm, I'm, I'm very... Michael, you mentioned the president's speech there today, and there was a question of what he'd come out and say, because obviously he says he's the most pro-union president to ever be in office. And there's been the question of, you know, what does that action actually look like here? The UAW typically endorses the Democratic candidate. They haven't endorsed Biden yet. They declined to do so when he came out for re-election in May. Why do, you, why do you think that is, and do you think this changes that? Well, I don't know, but I'll tell you, the reason they haven't endorsed him yet is because uh, auto workers, all, all groups of people that generally vote Democratic, auto workers, uh, uh, Black Americans, uh, women, 
uh, are, are fed up. Women were not even a year, were more, a little more than a year away from their rights of their bodily autonomy being taken from them by the Supreme Court. Where are the Democrats and what are they doing? Go down the list, whether, whether you're an African-American, whether you're an auto worker, you're a union member. No, they shouldn't. Every group should stop just handing over these endorsements, especially to the Democrats, because we've learned they had 49 years after Roe v. Wade was made legal by the Supreme Court, 49 years to make it the law of the land. And they didn't. So, so I, I love the fact that they just won't hand over sure. an endorsement. Uh, to to and he's right. Probably the most pro union president we've ever had. Do you and think so he, he did more. To, he took another step today in favor of the union and the working people. And I I think that should help. But he's already he's sending two of his administration people there. The deputy secretary of labor is going to Flint and going to Detroit. And uh, you know this is exactly what should happen. And he should make it clear to the automakers and to corporate America that the working people aren't going to take this anymore. And it's a, it was a powerful move today and good for him. And uh, we'll, we'll see what the auto workers decide to do with it. I'm curious what this means for you when you look at, you talked about just handing over endorsements in the broader political landscape. You obviously campaigned for Bernie Sanders in 2020 yes. when he was running for the Democratic nomination. When you look at the landscape now, and you see people like David Ignatius, who President Biden reads and likes, calling on him not to run in 2024. Do you think President Biden is the best Democratic candidate in 2024? Uh, without a doubt. I mean, you know, it, David Ignatius' piece, I don't know what to say to that. It's so odd that somebody in, I don't know how old David Ignatius is, but to have this kind of ageism and this sort of, uh, it, it's, it's sad to see that. But Joe Biden at 80 years old, I mean, uh, First of all, he could easily beat me in a foot race. I don't need to state the obvious. So <laughs> I'm just saying that at 80 years old, um, he's able to do so much good. Look at what has happened in his two years. Trump, post-pandemic, Trump wrecking so many things from the EPA to God knows <laughs> what we do. God does know, and so do we. What else he wrecked? And Biden came in there. And yes, as a Bernie supporter, I was thrilled with what he's done. Now, would he do everything I would do? No, he's not me. I'm not him. But uh, it has he has been um, an incredible president. Very progressive, frankly. Um, uh, you know, yeah, it's certainly more progressive you know, than some he, modern he Democrats would like. like. Because I'm just saying, yeah, and there's and and we all have a, a responsibility uh, uh, to get out there and vote and to get people to vote next year. But I'm see, here's why the optimism in me is that uh, so I read this statistic every year, 4 million 17 year olds turn 18, become adults, become possible voters if they choose to vote. And we've had record turnouts from young voters, young adult voters in these last three elections. And uh, they're going to vote, man, they're going to come out next year. How many young people? Seriously. So since since Donald Trump took the ride down the golden escalator in 2015, that means there's about 30 million Teenagers in that time period became adults, became eligible to vote. How many of them are going to vote for Donald Trump? He knows the answer to that. That's why some Republicans are trying to raise the voting age back up from 18 to 21. They're actually talking about that because young people will not vote for him. No young person has a poster of uh, Donald Trump in their bedroom. There's, well, there's I think some people, some people in my home state of Alabama certainly might. But when you look at the, the landscape of what it looks like if the election were held tomorrow, it looks like it's going to be a rematch between President Biden and former President Trump. Of course, what's changed is Trump is now facing 91 criminal charges. I mean, what do you think the election looks like if that is indeed what we see? Uh, well, then that's what we see. First of all, again, the, the age thing shouldn't matter a bit. Biden is out riding a bike. He's swimming in the ocean. He's, you know, 80-year-olds, you know, can do all those things. You know, they breathe, right? They actually, they actually, uh, they function well. They volunteer in their community. Um, 80 years old, you know, people are having sex at 80. They, then they have sex again. I mean, it's, we got to stop this nonsense about 80 is so, oh, it's like, it's not that. Biden's, Biden's uh, slogan in the coming year 
uh, should be uh, being up, if you, assuming he's up against Trump, uh, it should be this time we mean it. <laughs> this time for good. Donald Trump over and out. Never again, Donald Trump. This should be the end of Trump's uh, political career unless he's running for, you know, a uh, ward captain in, in whatever prison he's in. Michael Moore, you did tweet the, the day that he left the White House, trial, conviction, imprisonment. I mean, what if those trials, though, as he's now facing several, what if they do not happen before the election? Doesn't matter. People know the truth. The people know the truth. Uh, I hope they do happen. But it, on some level, it doesn't matter because uh, Biden won what, over 7 million votes last time. This is before all this stuff came out. Uh, Trump, look, I mean, yes, Trump will do well because there are there are tens of millions of people who love him. But we live in a nation of 330 million people. We are the majority. The majority of Americans look at any CNN poll. The majority of Americans believe that climate uh, a catastrophe is real. The 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 90 percent in some polls on gun control. 90 percent of Americans want gun control. I mean, look at the, go down the polls, uh, the 60 to 70% believe we need to bring back Roe v. Wade, that abortion should be legal. I mean, literally ask the American people on the issues, as CNN often does, where do you stand? They don't stand with the Republicans. They don't stand with Trump. Those days are over. The Republicans have only won one election since Daddy Bush was elected in 88. One election with a popular vote once in 35 years. That's how much the American people don't want a Republican in the White House. And the only way they can win is, is by gerrymandering, uh, trying to suppress the vote, all the things that they've been trying to do in recent years. Now they've been caught at it red-handed. Can you get me? I, I just need 11,780 votes. Could you, could you do that for me? You know, on tape, on tape, people, the American people have had it. They love their country. They want their democracy back. Uh, we ha all have different views on lots of things, but the one thing I think most of us agree on is yeah. we love this country and we love our democracy. Well, Michael Moore, as always, thank you for sharing your views with yeah. us tonight. We really appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you for being from Alabama, and thank you, Alabama, for giving <laughs> us some of the great, great American writers from Alabama that gave us To Kill a Mockingbird and so many other things. Thank you, Alabama. Yeah, Harper Lee. Michael Moore, thank you very much.